I gotta ask a question. Be honest. How many of you downloaded the Home Depot app while he was talking? Come on, be honest. Thank you. I did. Actually, I did. I was actually watching a video of how to build a deck, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. So very interesting. So um, as we brought a couple mics out, um, we want to open up facilitation for questions. So anybody who has a question for him, we're going to probably take three or four questions. So if you all would just come to the mic. And I'm going to start it off with one particular question because I shop a lot at Home Depot. Great. And, and, and I'm a technologist, but my dad was actually a builder and a contractor. So there's not a tool that exists that I don't already have. Okay, um, but here's a, a request, a question. Uh, one of the things, and I think the app would actually be very cool, is the stores are enormous. Yeah. What's the likelihood of you all getting consistent in your store format so I actually know where I'm going when I go to the store? So great question. I know I'm putting your product management on the, on the spot here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great question. So um, the likelihood of getting the stores all formatted the same is, is highly unlikely, right? Um, we actually just loaded a new app, our version 2 app, to the, uh, up to Apple last night. So if you download it now, it will automatically remind you, obviously, in hopefully four to five days to, for our second version. And our second version is a significant improvement from the first version. Not only can you buy, can you do commerce inside the app, uh, but it also has eight uh, tools and calculators in it. Uh, for instance, the um, nut and, it has a nut and bolt finder where you can actually put the nut on your uh, iPhone and then move it back and forth and actually get the right size, whether it's 16 millimeters or, or um, what have you. You know, how many folks are like, how big is this, right? The other thing we're going to be doing inside of our store finder, both online event, uh, here soon and it, it's in our iPhone app, is we've got the maps for ev all 1,960 stores inside your store okay. finder. So you'll be able to open up the store finder, find the map, find the store that you're getting ready to go to, and then there it is, the map, and you can open it up, you can play around with it, you can find the hardware department, the tools department, the paint department, you know, and know exactly where it is. And by the way, the most common question asked in our stores is, where's the bathroom? And uh, so <laughs> those, be on the map. those will be noted on the map as well. Okay, so if we can't get all the stores consistent, how about we integrate it into that GPS locator and we overlay it with the maps? Absolutely. I'm a product management guy. No, no, so, absolutely. Questions from the audience. If you don't ask the question, we're going to keep talking about tools. You guys might want to talk about technology, so it's up to you all. No questions. Actually, it must have been a great presentation. Well, thanks. Oh, really hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Yes, please. He's looking for an East Wing Hammer 16 ounce with a crooked claw. Perfect. And he doesn't want to wait in line. Actually, a nail gun. No. Uh, Home Depot Expo, you closed that. Yes. Category a few years ago it was a huge amount of space. To me, it was more upscale than Home Depot, and I actually bought my kitchen there. Yeah. And went through the design process. Not to criticize Home Depot Expo, but my guess is your online web is seeking to a add more products, b add some more upscale products that you didn't want to stock at all the stores. So, from a strategy standpoint, and you just starting this role at about the same time. How did you incorporate the expo concept into that? Where are you going with it? And, and, and how does that benefit everybody that was a consumer for that? Absolutely, great question. So uh, we're at about 135,000 items online right now. We're looking to be well over 300,000 12 months from now. And uh, a, a big piece of that will be adding items that we previously stocked inside of our, our expo business. Um, it was a great business, uh, one that uh, had a bunch of fantastic products. The problem was during the, uh, the economic downturn that we had over the last three years, uh, we just didn't have the scale in those businesses that we previously had. But there was you know, a number of customer value propositions that we, know we don't serve any longer with our orange boxes, and we think we can do a lot of that online. Because many of those shoppers that went to the expo business were a little bit more savvy, a little more upscale, and are much more comfortable shopping online. So not only will we be adding those products, but we've got some other things around the corner as it relates to reviving the Expo brand um, uh, that I think you'll find interesting over the next couple couple years. Other questions? How many of you actually uh, have done some type of project, whether it's Home Depot related or not, and got in the middle of it and wondered what to do and actually went on and looked at YouTube to find a video of it? Come on, how many? Yeah. And, and I look at the cross-section of the demographics of the audience, and we're probably not the next generation. 
So imagine what the next generation, no offense there, I'm part of that. So, but I mean, I've been stuck in the middle of a project before and, and went out, I mean, uh, and, and looked at something and there's already somebody out there who's figured it out that helps you do what? Keep from breaking something or doing it the wrong way the first time. So technology is, is definitely changing some things. So the, the other, and I don't want to put you on the spot as, as I might do, but the other question I have is, is there anything we can do to stop people from parking right in front of the store from a technology perspective? <laughs> I mean, I think if we could just put a buzzer there. Because That's right. That little yellow line, I think, means something for some people, but for some people it doesn't seem to mean anything. And I'm not talking about with your wife and kids stuck in the car. I mean, just in general. Yeah, but as long as they're spending several dollars. That's right. So, any other questions from the audience this morning? All right. Yeah, go ahead. Well, both of you. I was going to ask, you talked a lot about um, the, your online products for consumers, but clearly some of your customers are in the professional arena as well. Can you Absolutely. talk about what kind of things you have um, available or on the, on the pipeline for your professional services? Absolutely. Sure. Our, uh, our pro business, our pro customers represent, Frank's talked about this publicly, our CEO, they represent about 10% of our actual transactions and customer base, but they're 30% of our sales. So it's a, uh, it's a big, big component of our business for us. Um, and so one of the key things that we heard from our pros is actually show me the amount of inventory you have in an individual store. Right, a lot of companies, and we do this right now, will tell you, hey, this product is available in this store, which is fine maybe for the average consumer. They just want one drill or they want one you know, lighting fixture. But the pro, they want to walk in and be able to know that you've got 10, right, enough for the full project or for the house renovation. So as I showed, on uh, January 5th, we'll actually be launching across the entirety of our site um, the on-hand quantities of an item in all of our stores. So you'll be able to go in, you'll be able to say, okay, there's 10 of these lighting fixtures in the store. So the pro knows, okay, they've got enough for me to do my job today. Because, um, you know, the biggest complaint pros have is they want two things. They want you to save them time, and they want leads for projects, right? And um, so on the saving them time, we want to be able to say, okay, you can actually get all 10 of these items at your store. And then buy online pickup in store is rolling out next year. Uh, we've talked a lot about that publicly. And, um, that's one thing so I know our pros will take big advantage of is going in the night before, setting up their, um, uh, their orders for the next day, and then our stores will embrace that. They'll pick the, uh, pick the project, pick those orders in the morning, and have them ready when the customer shows up, when the pro shows up to go shopping. Um, but absolutely, our uh, building solutions for our pros, both to save them time and, to, and provide them uh, leads for their projects, are a, a big focus of ours. Question here. Uh, keeping the, uh, the multi-channel strategy that you have, that shopping is through multi-channels today, does that affect your growth in creating more retail locations? And uh, also, what is the globalization? Are you opening stores outside the U.S.? I know you have some in Canada. What about Asia Pacific and also in Latin America? Yeah, great question. So um, we've got almost 250 stores in Canada, and uh, we're the largest uh, home improvement retailer in Canada. And in Mexico, we're 150, close to 150 stores in Mexico. We're the largest home improvement retailer in Mexico. We've got just shy of 10 stores in China. Um, and we're still working through our format in China. And then we're almost 2,000 stores in the United States. Um, we're kind of uh, publicly on record. We're not going to be moving into Europe or into uh, Asia for the most part. But we do think South America and Latin America represent significant opportunity for us. Uh, Europe is, um, uh, is uh, very uh, consolidated already in terms of uh, the retailers that are over there, whether it be the Mervins of the world, the B&Qs of the world, the Kingfishers of the world. Uh, but Latin America and, Central, and uh, Central America and South America are still very fragmented and I think offer a nice opportunity for us. And we have a great business in Mexico. Um, in terms of the online globalness, we do have a website in Canada. It does a, uh, it's much, much smaller, uh, both in visits and in sales online. And the folks, you know, it's been a learning for me, but the Canadian, uh, customer uses uh, the web just like the customer in the United States does, but they just, their tendency to purchase is far, far lower. If you go look at any of the Forrester articles in Canada, it's about uh, 20 or 30 percent of our average conversion rates on, in the United States. Um, Mexico is even further, uh, uh, for, you know, much lower in conversion rate. We actually just have a brochure web, website for, for Mexico. Um, we do think longer term there's an opportunity to be more global with our website. Uh, you know, it's just because we don't have stores in Europe or in Asia, we might be able to ship to them. Sears does a lot of that. 
Uh, Amazon obviously uh, is global and they, um, without any brick and mortar stores, so big opportunity for us. Well, thank you. No, I appreciate Hang on it. one Thanks second. So Everybody get